show. Jason and Elliot enter the Spider-Verse. We read a movie. And Jason gets stuck on the elliptical, choosing his own adventure. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Risk a hog day. This episode of The Big Show is brought to you by Helen Mirren and Patreon superfan David Cole. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody, it's the Big Show, episode 336 for January 1st, 2019. Happy New Year. I'm Jason. I'm Anna. So uh, we went bowling uh, this weekend. I haven't been bowling in a long time, and I suck. Anna. Yeah, me too. But it was fun. We played this thing called Easy Bowling, where there's only... <laughs> we still suck. <laughs> we still suck. Although, to be fair, the kids had the bumpers up. Um, but it's only five frames, and you only get one bowl... One shot. ...per, so... Yeah. It goes fast yeah. because one of the problems when you play with kids is they get one, they take their turn forever, and then they want to play, and everyone else is going on forever and ever. So it was good. It was a it was a fast like uh, I guess you speed know. bowling. Well, no, but they there was like um, hmm, what's the word satisfaction? I don't know. Um, oh, because you could you finish you could the game win, quickly. and then you could play another game, and someone else could win. And yeah. So. And then the best part was at the end they started cosmic bowling with "Let's Get It Started" by the Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. I always need to bowl to that song. <laughs> I forgot that song existed. I did too. And then we had this discussion about that song when it first came out in 2003, and right. it had the R word in it. Yeah. Which you can still listen to on iTunes. Yeah. I remember we heard that and we were like. Oh my God, this is so wrong. But I love the beat. It's wrong, but it's peppy. <laughs> yeah. And then they changed it to Let's Get It Started. And we were like, I don't like it as much. Mm, yeah. It's not as it's not as hardcore anymore. Right? It's not as... It's, it's not going to upset as, anyone. Like, I don't feel bad singing it. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we did this weekend. And then um, <clears throat> last night, we finished reading Roma. We, yeah, we had to read it. <clears throat> Which, wow. It's um, on Netflix. So now we've seen two of the Oscar Buzz, well, two of the Oscar Buzz movies on Roma. I don't know if Bird Box is getting Oscar Buzz, but Anna... Isn't that a series, not a movie? No, it's, Bird Box is a movie. Oh. Oh, you didn't want to watch it because you thought it was going to be was hours and hours long? No, it's just a movie. Oh. I think. I thought it was a TV series. I think it's just a movie. No, I don't know. Oh. No, I'm pretty sure it's just a movie. Oh, okay. But you still probably don't want to watch it. Or, no, do you, or are you up for it? I know it's freaky, but... Right, I thought it was a series. I have to think about it now, because it's just a movie. It's just a movie. I, you know, it's over and done. But if it's a series, I knew I would watch one oh, episode God, and be like, no. I'm not watching this anymore. No, because it looks kind of like The Walking Dead if it were a um, series. Right. With That would go on and on and on. Oh, I'm no. pretty sure it's just a movie. Oh. Okay. But I get your... I get your thing. Yeah. So. No, it looks... Anyway, Roma <clears throat> is... Uh, how do you say his name? Alfonso Cuaron. Uh huh. Alfonso Cuaron. Director of Gravity. Director of Gravity. Which there was, was a fantastic movie. Yes, and there was a nice Gravity um, shout out in the middle of the movie, yeah. which was funny. Um, it takes was, place in 1970s Mexico. Yes. And it's um, it's basically about a sort of well-off family mm -hmm. and the hired help in their house, and really the hired help, the one particular maid, is there. Um, is a focus. Cleo. Cleo. I don't know why oh, it's called Manita Roma. Oh, Manita is what they call her in her language, which is whatever her language is. Yes, and why is it called Roma? I don't know. Okay. I kept waiting for one of the characters to be Roma or something. Yeah. Or, well, I thought it was going to happen in Rome. And then it was or like, maybe Mexico. what does Roma mean in Spanish? I don't know. We should look that up. Beautiful flower. Yeah, I don't know. I think it means beautiful flower. We've done a lot of research on this. Yeah. What I can tell you, the key takeaways from this movie is there's a lot of dog poop. Um, there's an earthquake in a hospital. There's a forest fire. There's naked martial arts. <laughs> yeah. And um, a really um, a lot of reading. It's all black a lot and of white. reading. Yeah. And it's basically slice of life. Yeah. With um, two women in different um, Econo economic socioeconomic brackets statuses. that are going through similar but um, yeah experiences in the same household and how they come out the other end so it's one of those really good oscar movies that doesn't have a really well-defined conflict beginning and middle and end right it's a slice of life <clears throat> movie so which is not my favorite kind of movie no but the cinematography is mesmerizing he loves to put the camera on a track and follow 
the characters and make them act in a very Huge long one shot scene. Yeah. yeah. And I was wondering some of those like the guy so there's the fire in the background and there's the guy who comes up and and sings to the camera this mm-hmm. very strange song. Um I was like, how many times do they have to take? Because the fire is still going. Yeah, in the I think a lot of it was so, CG, but we didn't even know it. Because no. look at how much CG he did in his last movie. The whole movie was CG, right? Oh, Gravity. That's true. So this, he could drop it in, and you wouldn't even realize, oh, that little lizard that's running perfectly uh, was CG. Right. Like, how did they get the lizard to do that? Right. Or run with the track on the camera. Yeah. Or the, or the um, shot that goes in a circle of her turning out. Lots of just stillness in this movie. Just like long takes of like right. just and then he would hold on the scene so you kind of i kept waiting for something bad to happen <laughs> like why are we holding on this street is something gonna nope we're nope. moving to the next we're scene just looking at... so but it was an interesting but like the the 360 spin. shots clearly there couldn't be any crew there or they did several you know timed you know because yet i mean it looked how do you really do it old. without getting the track in the shot yeah it looked really old but he has He's super high tech after gravity. Clearly, if you look at the Sandra Bullock doing just these weird things and floating on harnesses and stuff, it was like, yeah. So anyway, it's a good movie, but I don't think I would have watched it or wanted to watch it unless I knew it was possibly going to be up for an Oscar. But if you're into that, but cinematography, he better win um, for that. It's on the old Netflix, and you can watch it on your couch over two periods. Yeah, because there's a lot of reading. You can read it. Which is good because some of the dialogue's quiet, and I like to have. Yeah, I'm old. Well, sometimes we didn't know who was talking. Mm-hmm. That's we had true. to like bounce back and be like, oh. "Yeah, there was one particular scene. Like, wait, but oh, <laughs> who said that? Yeah, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, in book news, Jason's book club. Do you want to go first, or should I go first? Go. Okay. Uh, the Outsider, which is the new Stephen King book, which came out back in May. I read it with my ears in the car. Um, it's. Not my favorite Stephen King, and of course it has a very, 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 very awful um, child murder in it. So I don't know how they're going to adapt this, but evidently Jason Bateman is adapting it for a miniseries on HBO. Mm-hmm. I would watch anything with one of the sub-characters, with the um, investigator Holly Gibney. It's just a hilarious character in this book, and she's great. She's got kind of like this OCD investigator. That, so the the crime takes place in one town. It's the um, the beloved baseball little league coach um it looks like he did this crime he's got an alibi in another city is it really a good alibi is it not whatever it's sort of like it becomes this basic crime drama of like dna and you know surveillance stuff and then of course it's the stephen queen stephen queen the stephen king supernatural twist that makes it oh um, but anyway, in this other city, this investigator that's working with them, um, is Holly Gibney and she's hilarious. So if you can get past the, um, Child beginning, murder. which they don't dwell on it, but they reference it and they talk about, you know, how this kid was killed with a stick. Um, you don't, <laughs> if you can get past that, it's, it's, it's good. I would give it a, uh, I don't know, three and a half out of five, but, um, I still love the stand. That's my favorite Stephen <laughs> King. But anyway, Jason Bateman is probably going to co-lead it. Um, we don't know when it's going to come out, but um, I just want to say if, you, if you're into Stephen King, it's you've probably read it. But anyway, there you go. Anna, <clears throat> something um, a little more light and shiny. What What about what did I read? Uh, Where'd You Go, Bernadette? Oh, I read this a while ago. Yeah. But it's coming out as a movie now. Where'd You Go, Bernadette With by Blanchett. Maria Simple. I love that book. I laughed out loud at that book so many times. It's about this, uh, well, it's about this daughter's quest to figure out where her mother, Bernadette, has gone off to. And the the mother character is so, <laughs> I very much identified with her. Um, you identify she, with the mother or you identify with her as your mother? No, as me. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Um, in, well, no, not everything about her, but I identified with quite a bit of her. Um, and just her daughter was in this this private school and she was not interested in like any of the social activities or anything. And um, anyway, there's a lot about her that I thought was really funny. And she lives in Seattle. She hates Seattle because <laughs> of all the rain. Um, you don't so live in Seattle. I don't. I, ba- mm. I basically do. Um, and uh, anyway, the, the trailer has Kate Blanchett and uh, Billy Crudup in it, which I think are good 
probably pretty good uh, casting for those characters, and I'll probably have to see it. Oh, I thought it looked funny. It looked good. Yeah, I love that book. Quirky. It, oh, the mother is so quirky. So I don't identify with her completely, but there are certain parts of it, which if they're in the movie, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I see why you like her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, that's coming out. This is coming soon, so. I, I don't know. It must be Kate Summer. Blanchett. Well, Kate Blanchett movie wouldn't come out in the depths depths of winter yeah maybe it's like august or something though it's not gonna be a huge blockbuster although they're moving stuff back to march and april now because summer has expanded last year 2018 was hollywood's biggest summer and i know that for years they've been complaining about how awful it's been which is funny what did we go see i guess we was wonder woman this last summer no but black panther was this year and it seems like that was forever ago and that was early though that was february they didn't think it was going to be very good. And oh, now it's like... Huge. It's yeah, really good. Gangbusters. And so. Avengers. The Ultra. No, not the Ultra. The, the Infinity, one, the War. Infinity War. We went to that. I, we saw quite a few movies. Oh. And Elliot could go to quite a few this year. And in fact, Elliot and I just went to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And uh, we have a review for you. Jason, take it away. Thanks, Jason. Uh, so we watched yesterday... Uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's a long title. It is. Uh, or Spider-Man. Yeah. And uh, Spider-Man. So you're not really into Spider-Man or Superheroes, comics. Superheroes, or... not really my thing. Yeah. But you enjoyed this. It was a really good movie. Yes. And it is rated PG. Uh, Common Sense Media gives it a 9+. plus, Which I wouldn't say that it's probably for violence. I mean, there's some violence and some scariness. But mostly it's just kind of confusing because yeah. it's multi-dimensions coming together and stuff like that, which is a little, I don't even know if I got all of it. I got most of it. I mean, so. luckily I've seen Phineas and Ferb across the dimension, so I, I'm totally versed in multi-dimensions. Yeah, but, the, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, I guess there's a couple things I want to talk about. Um, overall, the story was, was great. It was, like it was a, a really good story, yeah. Teenager story, a uh, fun story with his dad, who's a cop. Who hates Spider Man, by the way. And which he was, gets bit by a radioactive spider. Of course, he does so. the whole bit by a radioactive to spider. Him. <laughs> it's funny, every time they introduce a new Spider Man, yeah. they go through the, as you probably already know, I was bit by a spider. Blah, blah, blah. And funny. you know the rest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's great. It's a great story. And I, we don't want to spoil it for you. In fact, if you want spoilers, um, we'll do a review and then you can stay to the very end of the show and we'll talk our spoilery stuff. But the animation was awesome it was really good um we were actually really close to the screen yeah, we were like right up there um but it wasn't that bad it was a little took a little getting used to but you could really see the dots it was like it was a newspaper printed almost sometimes and then they would throw words up on the screen that they like were it was thinking a comic or book. talking like yeah. a comic book so it looked like it was a comic book that came to life it was like a movie version of a comic book which is basically what it was <laughs> yeah but then it was cool because each of the spider people has like their own comic book sort of or has their own style yeah so like there's the, the pig which is very cartoony and it's and like <laughs> like he's he pulls out a you know a, a, mall, a wooden mallet out of nowhere and like, like it's funny and he floats like when he smells a hot dog or something. Yeah, it's like so very cartoony. <laughs> and then there's Noir Bat or Noir, I keep saying Batman because he looks like Batman. Noir Spider Man, like um, who's Nick, voiced by Nicolas Cage, which is very funny. Uh, but he's all black and white and like sort of like windy and <laughs> ethereal, and so his animation style is a little different. Well, because he's from like a long time ago. He's or from the '30s. Ah. Uh, he fights Nazis. Um, and then there's Penny Parker, who is Japanese from the future, like and she, very future. And she's at like Japanese anime animation almost. <laughs> and yeah. then there's Gwen, who is sort of like it's like the same, more more feminine, I guess. Yeah. Sort of flowy, but but then it's like she's from the, sort of the same like. Um, time period is our dimension, yeah. just another dimension. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. it was really cool. The animation was amazing. It was but really cool. But then there's the the old guy. And then there's <laughs> then there's middle aged <laughs> Spider Man, who by the way is voiced by Jake Johnson, who you know from um, New Girl, um, who is um, on that. He's just very you know overweight. 
older <laughs> Spider-Man. And like his backstory is so long. <clears throat> yeah, his, his goes on forever because he's been around for, for a long time. It's like, uh, get to the point. <laughs> but it's funny. Um, the music is great. There's tons of like great music through the whole thing and it's very um, like just, just like energizing. Because they're just like playing songs the entire time but we don't even really realize. Yeah, yeah. So. It really keeps the, the whole pace going. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Um, so the only negative that that we came up with, and this movie's getting a 97% on Rotten Tomatoes, Yeah, was Kingpin, who uh, is the bad guy. The really uh, fat guy. Huge guy. Um, with the creepy head. It's like... So he's he's <laughs> trying to make these this multiverse thing, but you don't really find out what his motivation is. Until like... Like right version. before the very, the climax. Which yeah. is fine, but... Then you have to like quickly be like, okay. Got it. Oh, got it. But now. which actually gives more time for all of the characters to sort of come together and mm -hmm. and sort of build that um, camaraderie all the way up. Yeah. So we're not really worrying so much about the bad guy going up. But um, yeah, that was fine. Yeah. And if there's ever an uncle, you know he's, something's going to happen to the uncle. You know going to happen to the uncle. It's always the family member that's like not the parents because the parents are really good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it could have happened. I mean, you know, Peter Parker, you know, his uncle dies, and then that sort of like throws him off into a thing. And actually, all of these characters had someone yeah, die. They all talk see. about uh, someone who died. Pigs was like a. Uh, I think it was his uncle or his dad. Or right. And like, but everyone someone else, had. dad, dad, best friend. Yeah. Uncle yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's our quick review of Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to buy it. So if that's any Definitely. indication. Uh, Amity's <laughs> hitting me with her tile. <clears throat> Let's see here. Anyway, um, we're going to say uh, back to you, Jason, and uh, stay tuned to the end of the show if you want to get our spoiler reviews. So that beeping noise, I put a tile in uh, Amity's purse. Well, actually, we had a tile on her the whole time we were, we're in Europe. In Europe. <laughs> Who's on a necklace? <laughs> okay, so the Bluetooth range isn't that far, but there are other people with other tile devices. So if she were lost, and it had my phone number and name written on it. So now we have it, and I put it in her purse, so if she didn't lose her purse because she's putting money in it, and but she can push it on hers and make my phone ring, which happened while Elliot and I were watching the... Uh, yeah. Or reviewing the movie, so. Um, so, Netflix, Bandersnatch. This is a choose-your-own-adventure, um, which sadly... We, I confirmed with that my friend Robert Kidman said you cannot do it on your Apple TV, which is too bad because it would be good to do it on the couch. But I did it on the um, phone. I got so engrossed in it that I actually accidentally did an extra 24 minutes on the um, elliptical <laughs> because I was playing along. And I've gone through it several times. It's about That's this- That's cool, I love that they did that. It's so weird though, cause, so it's funny because it's about this guy who read this Choose Your Own Adventure book and he's turning it into a video game and so you help him choose your own adventure. And in some paths that you go on, Very he meta. like he knows that you're controlling him. He's like, what should I do? <laughs> and then he goes, Ooh, that's he goes cool. really? He goes, and it's like, who's controlling me? And like, give me a sign. And like one of them is Netflix or you just give him a sign or something. And so then it's like, or like do he wanted to do something that the character doesn't want to do. And he's like, I can't stop. <laughs> That's cool. It. It's really good. That's and so, creative as hell. So the, the key is to get to a good ending is to not kill the protagonist I found. I did that. A <laughs> couple like, times. I was like, jump. Is this Black Mirror? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's Black Mirror and it's a Choose Your Adventure. So it's simple things like what does he have for breakfast or what music is he going to listen to to kill him or don't kill him <laughs> or or do this or that and some of them take you know take the pills don't take the pills and all this and th so you get to an ending and then it's like do you want to go back and change one of your decisions do you want to go you know and then That's you can watch cool. it again from another fork so it's very happy because like well what would have happened if i made that other choice so you you want to watch it oh man so Is it's it a lot of fun that? oh and just the, the number of the figuring out of, well but and the scripting and one of the things that i figured sometimes That's you awesome. make a choice and it there's a little bit, you back. it colors it this way, but then you still come back over right. this way. So, but I'm sure they shot tons of stuff that I haven't cool. even seen yet. So, um, it's pretty cool. Hey, let's take a quick break. 10 seconds. We'll be right back. Do you love nature? Do you love squirrels? Maybe you should consider joining Friends of Squirrels. We are a squirrel refuge that provide a safe place for squirrels 
We also make educational videos for you to enjoy. Visit friendsofsquirrels.org. All right, back, we're back. There are uh, two new trailers that really are worth talking about that came out in the last month that we should talk about, and that is Captain Marvel and uh, Avengers Endgame. So, Captain Marvel, this one, this trailer looked much better than the first one. I really enjoy the opening scene where she fights the old lady on the bus. That's really, yeah, that's pretty funny. Really funny. Um, I don't know if we get a whole lot more. We get a lot of more words like Cree and fight and Annette Benning and <laughs> Nick Fury with two eyes and a cat driving an old car and Petting stuff. A cat. And then there's some sort of war at Earth that we never knew about. Well, I, don't, I feel like it's in space. It's a space war. It looks like it happens just outside Earth. And there's some blue just blood right outside or something. The door. I don't know. But I don't know. It comes out in March. Are you excited about it? Do you think Elliot will be excited about it? She, I think she, she'll think it's awesome. Maybe probably. she doesn't. Oh, she she liked Spider Man. She liked Wonder Woman. But she doesn't really like superheroes. So, but this would be different because she's totally into girl power. So, um, I don't know. It's worth. I, I definitely want to watch it. I just don't, I'm I'm baffled by it. So right. Anyway, and then Avengers Four um, End Game. I had to. I couldn't remember. I'm watching Avengers. Infinity War over again, uh, which by the way, I'm watching all the Avengers and they stand alone on their own. Because I'm wondering, Elliot kind of wants to watch them, but she doesn't want to watch all, all of the Thor. Da, 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 da. But they do this funny thing in there where they give you a quick, quick recap of what happened in like but Thor's what, movie. My, or... I wonder if you would be able to catch that if you didn't already know it. Probably not. I mean, you know that who, yeah. It gives you the information, but you really would have to pay attention to everything they say if you didn't already know it in the background. But again, I don't think it matters. It's like, oh, it's the Iron Man, it's the Thor guy. It's, right. You know, well, and the she's jokes seen are there, Iron so. Man one and two, mm -hmm. and um, she hasn't seen Thor because she studied uh, Norse mythology, yeah. and so Thor for her, she's gonna be like, what the hell? This is wrong. All kinds of wrong. Although it is funny, I was watching it because we always have, have this discussion with Elliot because she's like. They weren't brothers, look at the art. And in Avengers, they talk about, actually, we're not brothers. And we were raised by bright brothers, and I'm not Asgardian. And <laughs> it's like, oh, I never really paid attention to what their conversations were. <laughs> so I think they try to stay true a little bit to it, even though they present it like they are brothers in a different light. But right. Anyway, in this but one. The Ragnarok one is because she learned, she heard the mm -hmm. Ragnarok story. And then I told her about the movie, and she's like, what? <laughs> that's not at all what happens. The only thing that's the same is Asgard is destroyed. That's what happens in, in Ragnarok. But, but Hulk also, wasn't there. But Thor dies in oh. Ragnarok. That's that's the end. That's their... Um, what is what is it on Earth? On Earth? The, Armageddon? Yeah, they're Armageddon. It's the end Okay. for those Norse gods. So anyway, in this trailer, Iron Man is all alone on a spaceship and I had to Ran figure out, out of air. why is he because he's really the only one that survived the snap on Titan everybody else oh. was gone so it's just him in a spaceship right with a day of air and he's been stabbed and so Doctor Strange gives up the Infinity Stone or the Time Stone to save Iron Man right but if you remember he Strange went through all the possible permutations so that may be the permutation that he's playing out that Iron Man has to live in order to... Right. So, I don't know. And then we find out, we see other people that survived, and Ant-Man comes at the end to save them, not Captain Marvel. <laughs> so, that's funny. Um, we watched The Post. It was it was forgettable. I liked it when I watched it. Mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg directed... Tom Hanks. What's her name? Marilyn Monroe. No, that's not her name. What? What is her name? Helen Mirren, not also, also not her name. <laughs> what is her name? This is going to be fun. <laughs> Meryl Streep. Oh, Meryl Streep. <laughs> Helen Mirren Streep. Helen Streep. There was, there were some N's involved, M's involved. Yeah. That's where I was getting there. Yeah. There we go. So it's the Washington Post uh, back during Watergate. Before, right? Before Watergate. Watergate. Pre-Watergate. Oh, it's the Pentagon Papers. So right. talking about everything that happened in, in the Vietnam, Vietnam War, War and how they were keeping it going because they didn't the want to say anyway. they were going to lose. Yeah. yeah. And so all these, yeah, it was about printing the papers and the New York Times got them and they got it first and then the Washington Post got it and continued printing. And then um, the end, and this is very Steven Spielberg, which 
I like Steven Spielberg movies, of I course. Saw it. But, but Steven Spielberg has to over explain things, and it bothers me to death sometimes. Because the end of the the end of this movie um, is like, you know, it's a Tom Hanks character. He's the editor, and then the publisher is Helen Mirren. <laughs> no, and, Meryl Streep. <laughs> and uh, and they're like, wow, that was crazy. I hope nothing else happens again. And then they show. Um, Deep throat. Yeah, they show. Well, they show um, the break in at the Democratic headquarters in at the Watergate Hotel, right? But all they had to show me was a flashlight and a break breaking into the door, and then it kept going. And then there was a call from a security guard saying, I'm at the Watergate <laughs> Hotel. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm not a crook. Steven Spielberg. <laughs> oh my God, you don't need to. I know. I knew yep. what happened in the la You just could have ended it right there. But he does that. He always has to over explain stuff for well, dummies out there. Maybe they, they. We know. Let me. Let's talk about how many dummies are out I there. I know about Woodward and Bernstein, I guess. You do. You're too cool for school. Yeah, there was a movie also. There were, what, it was uh, Robert Redford and yeah. mm -hmm. that little guy that Detroit. played in. Uh, what was that guy's All name? All the presidents. Oh, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Thank you. I'm on fire today. I only had one Nespresso. Hey, what was your favorite Christmas gift this year? Nespresso machine. You know what mine was? <laughs> I have two favorite Christmas gifts this year. And they were the ones I gave. The Nespresso and Disneyland. Disneyland, yeah. So. We haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, I know. D Christmas this year was a little bit... Usually I'm all over it, and my job was so crazy this fall that I, I didn't even have time to think straight, really. But it was yeah. good because we had way less stuff than we it's have true. in and the past. And it worked out just fine. Yeah, so. it wasn't too much stuff. I remember last year I was like, eh, I've gone a little overboard. <laughs> yeah. There's this castle thing that I got for Amity last minute and then last, last year, year. And she hasn't played with it. I had to get rid of the damn thing. No, and the TP broke. Yeah, the TP broke. Last year was kind of a bust for Christmas. Yeah. We'll see how this year plays out. Anyway, um, and that's about everything. Just coming up on TV, the Masked Singer looks kind of funny. It's celebrities, athletes, in full mask costume singing. Here's a little trailer of it. Fox Wednesday, celebrities go undercover. Under these masks, we have Grammy winners, Emmy winners, and Hall of Fame players. In Fox's musical guessing game. Are you in a boy band? Stop smiling at me. Every week, someone will be revealed. One of our stars is going home. It's the international phenomenon. Who's behind the mask? Yeah! The Masked Singer premieres this Wednesday on Fox. And it looks funny because then they get when they get voted off, you find out who it was. Which reminds me a little bit of when Ryan, Re Ryan Reynolds was doing his um, uh, media for Deadpool 2. And he did that over in Japan. Oh. And But he was like dressed up as a unicorn and then he was singing. I don't know what he was singing. Then did he come out as Deadpool? Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh my God, why I went out? Um, and then Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which is all we can talk about and wait for, comes back on January 10th-ish. Hooray. It's on our anniversary almost. Mm -hmm. Happy anniversary. Yeah. 20 years. We're old. Yeah. We're married for 20 years. <laughs> we have we have 11 year old now. When did that happen? 20 years. The 11 year old. So we've been uh, recording the show for a while, so we're probably going to end it. Um, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to like, like. If you want to say anything, it's in the comments. Make sure it's nice. Um, but we're going to go to the spoilers now for Spider-Verse. So we, you can say goodbye right now if you haven't seen it, because Elliot and I are going to talk about the things that we thought with spoilers. So um, until next time, I'm Jason. I'm Anna. Seacrest. Oh. All right, so clearly you're here because you've already seen the movie and yep. you want to know what we think about the other parts. Right. Uh, Spider-Man dies <laughs> right off the beginning. <laughs> you're like, what? Wait. He, he can't, can't die? Can't die? Well, this movie's called <laughs> Spider-Man. What? But then, you know, Miles is going to replace him. So, uh, yeah. That's fine. Uh, we like and, and Miles and Gwen when they meet each other in the high school is very funny. Mm. Uh, we, we see he can't control his stickiness. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that kid's first two days of school are really great. <laughs> <laughs> and she has to get a haircut, which is very funny. Yeah, and then uh, one of her, one of her the favorite lines is when uh, she basically rescues them, and he's like, "Like your haircut, you are not allowed to like my haircut." <laughs> right. right. Um, let's see. So. It's cool though, Doc Ock, who's a bad guy in, I think, one of the first Spider-Man movies, played by 
a big guy, and in this one, uh, the female scientist, who kind of comes out of nowhere that she's Doc Ock, which is really cool. And Kingpin, um, w which is funny because he's in the Marvel um, uh, Daredevil shows, played very differently by Vincent D'Onofrio, and in this he's like a huge guy, which is really cool. Um, Aunt May is cool yeah. in this world. Because like, she knows what's going on. Cool. She's sort of um, frail in all the other um, Spider-Man um, worlds that I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, his powers. Like he's got yeah. cool spark Spider-Man powers. Yeah, he can go invisible. Invisible. And, and the, like the shocky shocky thing. thing. And after he figures out how to control it, which is the typical Spider-Man coming around, or yeah. any any superhero coming around story. Anyone getting something happen to them is like, what's going on? Oh, I got it now. <laughs> how do I do this? And then he saves the day at the end. So yep. that's cool. Uh, and then the relationship with his dad. You know, his dad thinks that he kills his uncle and then he doesn't and then his uncle's like oh my god you're spider-man please do good things and he dies um yeah. the, I'm, i called it right away though i'm like elliot he's gonna be the bad guy and i'm like <laughs> i know <laughs> and he was uh gwen is cool i love the gwen character i like that she dances she's like wears ballet shoes mm -hmm. which is really cool yeah Cause and so clearly there's going to be a sequel yeah like it ends and like the crazy thing and so they've got to figure out some way to go from dimension like maybe, to dimension like maybe the next movie or something they're gonna pick up right where it left off because you can't like start a movie like a few days after the last movie right because this one you have to pick up right after that's true yeah. now i thought that they were gonna kiss At before, the very end, she before she jumped, into jumped the in it was so close so did i and i was like oh she's like <gasps> fret fret bye <laughs> And then she calls him from her dimension and says, Hey, Miles, so you got a minute? At the end. So, so, yeah. so does that mean he's going to go into her, her world? world? Or she's going to come? She'll probably go into his. I'm guessing. Maybe. But anyway. Or maybe he'll be time traveling this time. Yeah. Well, dimensional traveling? Yeah, and maybe they have to figure out some way so that they don't die after they go over there. Because remember, they were like glitching. Because they're all like, da -da 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 like, yeah, this is why I should stay here. Yeah. <laughs> so. so. Anyway. Uh, we love the movie. Yeah, it was and, good. Um, like, I know, I'd heard that it was like, you know, funny and good. And I was like, well, yeah, but it's a superhero movie. So it's going to be good and funny for a superhero movie. But overall, it's like an actually good movie. I do like, you should watch the new Spider-Man movie. But I think you need to watch one of the Avengers movies first. Yeah, not a superhero person. <laughs> I know. But but I've been watching the Avengers movies. And I don't think you have to watch any of the other ones. They sort of like stand on their own. So, okay. And really, there's only three Great. Avengers movies. So... Um, if you right. want to, and if you want your comics, go to uh, neighborhoodcomics.com and my friend Lee will hook you up. Bye.